Hello, it's Tom here with a look at the best options for upgrading storage on the Nintendo Switch. Mainly, I went in wondering how to get the fastest loading times in huge multi-gigabyte games like Zelda Breath of the Wild. Whether you're playing from a cartridge, which is built in storage, or from a micro SD card, the question is, are loading speeds affected at all based on where your game is stored? So let's take a look at the options and one of the console's biggest problems. Out of the box, Switch offers just 32 gigabytes of built-in NAND memory for downloaded games. Worse still, the operating system takes a good chunk of that, leaving only 25.9 gigabytes of space to play with. Bear in mind a game like Zelda Breath of the Wild uses 13 gigabytes, and needless to say, onboard storage won't cut it if you're downloading lots of games from the eShop. Unless you plan to stick with cartridges from here onwards, upgrading storage with a micro SD card is a must. That leads us to option three then. According to Nintendo Japan's website, Switch supports up to UHS-1 standard SD cards, in theory giving us bus speeds of up to 104 megabytes per second. And so for speed tests, I tried two SD cards to see if that bandwidth is really being tapped into. The first is a basic 16 gigabyte SanDisk Ultra Micro SD, a UHS-1 card that gets up to 18 megabytes per second read times. Next, let's go up a level to a £43 SanDisk Extreme Plus SD, a 64GB SDXC card. Talking on speeds, this Extreme Plus is also a faster UHS-3 category flash, with up to 90MB per second read and 60 for write. This category's top speeds aren't supported on Switch, of course, but it's still fair to expect throughput on here to be better than a regular UHS-1 SD, at least in theory. So to the tests with Zelda, and we have a four-way split here. To the top left is a regular cartridge, while on the top right is Switch's 32GB internal storage. Next we have the optional upgrades, our basic SanDisk 16GB Ultra SD in the bottom left, and finally we have SanDisk's faster 64GB Extreme Plus card on bottom right. Using Zelda as a benchmark while docks, the results are surprising, and it isn't the fast 64GB card that wins out at all. Loading a game after a fresh boot, it turns out Switch's 32GB internal storage is consistently the fastest option. I measured each to the exact frame, and in this case Switch's built-in storage takes just 30 seconds until we get to gameplay. That's a lengthy wait, but still 14% faster than a cartridge, shaving off 5 seconds by comparison. And it even beats the 34 second results on both microSDs, even the 64GB model, each of which measure within split seconds of each other. This isn't a one-off either, the order of these results is exactly how all later tests play out. So if we load another complex area like Kakariko Village, Switch's internal storage is once again in pole position. Likewise, the 16GB microSD is always in second place, the 64GB microSD in third, and then Zelda played from a cartridge is always last. Whether it's the giant tower in the Great Plateau or a small shrine with a much shorter loading screen, Switch's built-in storage always wins in loading speeds, though to varying degrees. For Kakariko, that's again a 3 second advantage for the 32GB onboard system memory compared to a cartridge. Meanwhile, between the two micro SD cards, we're looking at a split second difference again, and it's the cheaper UHS-1 16GB SanDisk Ultra that wins the second spot. The same goes for areas with a smaller data footprint for geometry and textures. The Owa Dame Shrine is much like any other, in that it takes barely 10 seconds to load regardless of where the game's installed. But still, Switch's internal storage wins out here by a second. One theory is, since all save data is stored to internal storage, having game install data pulled from the same place may be a benefit. So let's try it another way. Loading a save game is one thing, but what about Breath of the Wild's instant travel between towers and shrines? It's a crucial part of the game design given the scale of the world, big enough to be divided into regions. Pulling up the map though, it again takes 27 seconds for the internal storage to warp us to the Great Plateau Tower. That still saves us 5 seconds over the cartridge time at 32 seconds, and the microSDs fall in between the two, the same as loading a save. In other words, it's a conclusive win for Switch's limited 32GB of internal storage. These results play out again and again though. But that's not what we wanted to hear, given this NAND partition is completely fixed in place and non-expandable. 32GB is all you get, but Nintendo has at least made sure its direct bus connection to the chipset hits decent speeds. Less impressive is the fact cartridges fall behind every time. 
It's a five second difference at worst in Zelda, but down the line I wonder how other big Switch games like Skyrim might be affected. There's also the matter of the SD card speeds. Really, the fact neither of these SanDisk SDs can overtake Switch's onboard storage suggests there's a speed cap. Also, it doesn't matter what the rated read bandwidth is on the SD package, whether that's 80 megabytes per second on the 16 gigabyte model or 90 on the 64 gigabyte model, it's clear Switch isn't making the most of either. So long as it's a minimum of UHS-1 like our 16 gigabyte card, you get roughly the same loading times or even slightly better as a much faster rated card. So overall, for anyone hoping to upgrade to a micro SD, my advice is to invest in the largest UHS-1 card you can. Surprisingly, you can buy 128 gigabytes for just £37 or $40 and 200 gigabytes is up for grabs for around double that. It's not quite the fastest method, but you're still getting better speeds than the cartridge with loads of breathing room for future downloads. As a heads up, there are a few points worth covering for people looking to upgrade. Firstly, if you've already downloaded games to Switch's internal storage, right now it's impossible to transfer them directly across to a micro SD. Once you put in a new SD card, you have to re-download all that data over again to the new destination. It's strange there's no basic copy function on the Switch right now, and for game data, all you can do is delete. Alternatively, there's the archive option, which also deletes that data, but keeps an icon on the main screen with a link to re-download. Also worth mentioning, once you've installed a microSD into the Switch, all games automatically download to that location. Unlike screenshots, you don't get to decide where game data is installed. Only once the SD card fills up completely does the Switch then start using the internal storage. So, say you want just one game on the built-in NAND memory to enjoy faster loading times. You've got to remove the micro SD card first, install the game there, and then reinsert that micro SD again. Again, it's a very odd setup, but worth knowing in advance. Fortunately, for those already using a micro SD card, but want to upgrade to a larger size model, there's no need to re-download everything. The good news is you can actually just transfer between your two SD cards using a PC. The game file names are presented as a long string of numbers and letters, but you can get an idea of which game is which by looking at file sizes. This way you just drag and drop the SD card's contents from one to the other, and all games work on the new card, so long as you're using it on the same Switch console of course. But that about wraps it up. Clearly, if you're in the market for more storage space on your Switch, spending that money on capacity rather than speed is the way to go. Anyway, if you found this comparison insightful in any way, do let me know by liking and subscribing. But until next time, thanks for watching.